How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Today I wanted to do just a really quick video on this beautiful summer's day. I'm just on my walk back home, so I thought I'd do a quick one on the foundation of all success. you think that would be a really long uh, video, wouldn't you? But it's not, because it all boils down to one basic principle, and that's to lead the life that you want to lead, right? Now, isn't that the foundation of all success? I know it's very simple, uh, it's very logical, it's very, um, you might say it's, uh, it's sort of, it doesn't need to be said, you know, that if you were leading the life that you want to lead that, you know, you're successful, but it depends what you think of as success. Uh, Warren Buffett said that if, if all you think about is um, doubling the figures at the end of your balance sheet, um, and that's what you aim at every time, then your life is not going to be very successful, very happy, because that's not what life is all about. Um, and it's the same sentiment that's repeated all the time by people who have got great wealth, so I suppose they're in a good position to say that, but by people also that haven't got great wealth, you know, by People like the Dalai Lama, I remember listening to one of his audio books and he said, he said, if you view success as having material things, you will never have enough because you'll always want more. There is always more to have. You know, there's always a, a bigger house or a bigger boat, bigger car, bigger bank account, bigger schlong, that's what your thing is. Um, if that's the way you view life, if that's the way you view achievement, success, happiness, then you will never reach your goal because somebody has always got a bigger house than you, bigger car, bigger schlong. And uh, what are you going to do then? So the only way to look for it is inside, right? So that was what he was saying. That's what a lot of people say that happiness is is uh, an inside job. It's um, something that is only can only be found not by searching outside, but by searching on the inside, right? Of course, people on the outside um, add to your happiness. My son adds to my greatly to my happiness, as does my partner, my family. I get great enjoyment and pleasure from being with them. Money is uh, helps you to be happy. There's no doubt about that because it means that you can do some of the things in your life that you would otherwise be unable to do, you know. So, you know, I think being poor sucks big time. And um, I think unless you say, well, yeah, I don't want money and I'm going to go and live the life of a, a, a monk and seclude myself up in the in the, the mountains of Tibet somewhere and pray all day, you know, if you change your identity to that level, then, you know, being poor is not, it's not going to be a problem to you, you know, it all depends how you look at these things. But if you want to see some good things in life, then money helps. Um, but seeing all the good things in life is pointless if you're not leading the life that you want to lead. Um, and for me, leading that life and getting to that stage where you're leading the life that you want to live means that there's nothing else that you want to change about yourself. As long as you've got changes that you want to make in your life to that core identity, that core person that you are, as long as you have changes that you need to make to that person, then uh, you're not leading the life that, you know, you're you want to live, you're selling yourself short. So, it all boils down to short-term pain for long-term gain, instead of short-term gain for long-term pain. Because that's the way I lived most of my life until I stopped drinking. And then, I still had a lot of work to do, there's still a lot of things that I want to change. I want to change a lot of things in my life. And 
and I'm hoping that I've got enough time left to make those changes, right? Um, but I'm heading in the right direction, which brings me immense satisfaction, right? Um, and enjoyment and gives me pleasure. And I'm not yet leading the life that I want to be. I've not yet settled on my identity as a person. You know, I don't really even know, you know, exactly who that end person is going to be. I have a good idea. Um, but it changes all the time. It's a, it's a fluid process that's going to change uh, the more I get into this. And for me, that, that thing that was holding me to my old identity, that one massive thing that was the alcohol, you know, it's a poison in more than one way. It's a poison not only physically to your physical being, to your physical organs, destroys your physical organs, it destroys your mind, which destroys your thinking. I mean, your brain is the seat of your thinking. Without your brain, you've no thinking, you know. We see people all the time, look at poor Muhammad Ali, who um, his body was destroyed with uh, Parkinson's disease, you know, a disease that who knows whether he contributed to, towards it himself, but for a lot of his life, you know, he was like that. Look at Stephen Hawking brilliant, brilliant mind who has come up with some of the most deep concepts about our, our universe and our creation. And yet the guy for the majority of his life, sorry about this wind, uh, for the majority of this guy's life, I'm going to have to walk sideways, then the wind is behind me. For the majority of his life, um, he's been confined to uh, a wheelchair in a in a ruined body, you know, because of uh, a disease, you know. And I remember going around one of the, my my best customers when I was in Ireland. He was um, uh, let's see if we can get into the trees down here. Oh, it's a, such a warm wind. It's a lovely wind. Yeah, there's some bushes down here, maybe, yeah. You feel it now, it's going to go. Right, I'm in a bit of a shelter here. Um, yeah, I was going to say, that the, the guy that we were, I was talking about before, you know, I used to get my car fixed with his uh, with his son. And we used to do his hedges, you know, he had these big, tall Lelandi hedges that we used to go around and do a couple of times a year. And his wife had uh, dementia. And... It was so sad because, you know, he'd tell me stories about, you know, what they used to do when, when they were younger. And uh, that she, sometimes she didn't even know who he was, you know, and he'd lived with her for 50 or 60 years, you know. And, you know, he'd wake up one day, you know, some mornings and he'd come down and she didn't know who the hell he was, you know. And she'd, and she was never scared or anything like that. She sort of had a vague notion that he was friendly, but she just forgot his name and forgot that he was her husband, you know, so it's just sad and that's something that, that you know, like might be, you know, you don't know what, what really causes these these things in people, these diseases, nobody knows, you know, they have ideas, there's theories, but reality is completely different, you know, they don't know if it's something to do with lifestyle, where we live, you know, the things that we've done, you know, I don't know. What I'm saying is that, you know, the, the, what you've got in your control is, is the choices that you make, right? And like I said, it's the biggest fundamental foundation of all success is living the life that you want to live. If you're living the life that you want to live, regardless of what that means to you, whether that means having lots of money or, you know, having big yachts and dolly birds by your side, you know, um, Whatever, you know, whatever your personal view of that is, you will know that when it's happening and you'll know when it's not happening and you know that there are changes that you, that you need to make in your life. So if you don't like the job that you're in, find a way to get out of it, you know, to change, to make the changes. You know, if you don't like the, um, the, the place that you live, make the changes, you know. You know, I, I mean, I've done some of these things 
despite my drinking, I've done some of them. We moved over here because I just couldn't stand living in Ireland anymore. Not because I don't like the country. I, I love the country. But, I, you know, I left Ireland because I, I, I couldn't stand the rain anymore, to be honest. I mean, where we were living in Ireland, there was nearly 300 days every year where we got some form of fucking rain. And, you know, I, it's just depressing. You know, I, I couldn't live with that anymore, so I moved. And it took, took a long while to sort of plan it out and... Uh, took about three years before we could execute that, you know, before we could move over here. And I had family over here, so it made it a lot easier uh, to do it. And before we moved over, sort of things financially collapsed and we really had to, to start again. But we had enough so that we could basically live. We lived very poorly for, for, um, for a while, but it, it doesn't cost a lot to live over here. But I'm saying is that, you know, if you want to make, you want to get the life that you want to leave, to live you've got to put up with the discomfort and make those changes because if you don't it's an awful shame uh, it's an awful shame you know to waste your life you know it's, it's your life at the end of the day it's nobody else's life and you're the only one that's really going to suffer you and maybe your, your kids you know your family um, so yeah that's that's it you know for, for what it's worth a little inspirational one there um, I'm going to start walking a bit more so I'll wrap it up here uh, if you have any questions about this one at all, leave a comment down below. Um, if you have any comments at all, yeah, I'd love to hear them. Um, if you want to listen to the audio of this or any of the other podcasts, any of the videos, you can go over and the audio is down below the video. You can also get the transcripts and sign up for the newsletter. It's a weekly newsletter, um, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three times a week, depending on when I can be sort of asked to do it, really. Um, I know I should be changing that. It's one of the things I want to change in my business. But um, yeah, it is as it is at the moment anyway. But um, hopefully it lets as a, a little reminder. So anyway, until next time, uh, have a great day. Keep safe. Uh, keep the alcohol out of your mouth. And until next time, I'm Kevin O'Hara for Alcohol Mastery. Onwards and upwards. Good luck.